I'm from Kentucky, and Kentucky is a tobacco growing state. It's historically been a tobacco growing state, so it's been a challenge to do the tobacco control work in a place that uh, values tobacco. Has, we have a, had a long history of tobacco. Kentucky is uh, leads the nation, actually, in smoking and in lung cancer uh, rates. Uh, we're one of the national leaders. Uh, just to give you an idea, about a quarter of our adults smoke, whereas the rest of the United States, it's about 50 15%. Breathe is a large team and we really uh, want to uh, make it easier for people to breathe. Uh, we do that in four ways. Uh, we do research, primarily outcomes research, but we also do community uh, engagement and empowerment and helping people pass policies at the local level and at the state level. Lastly, we are really interested in increasing access to health services. You know, tobacco use, particularly in the United States, has become kind of a, a behavior of uh, subgroups of people in different subpopulations and so it is a social justice issue. The rates of smoking are much higher among disadvantaged populations so people with substance use disorders, people of low income, people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, people with mental illness and it's not by accident that these groups have high rates of smoking. They are um, marketed to by the tobacco companies. Based on many interviews with um, clients we designed a program that would take into account their desire to quit smoking, but also the very high stress levels in their life. And so Get Fit and Quit is a, it's designed to be an hour and a half long sessions where half the sessions are, you know, traditional smoking cessation content and the other half are group physical activity. And we saw participants reducing their um, cigarettes per day and we also saw uh, decreases in their uh, depression levels and their perceived stress levels, as well as an increase in their regular physical activity. In the U.S. currently about 10% of women smoke throughout pregnancy. However, in Kentucky, where where center is located, up to 25% of moms smoke during pregnancy, so that's really about one in four. One of the important pieces of research that we've recently focused on was the impact of smoke-free policy on pregnancy outcomes. And what we found is that communities that adopt strong, stringent smoke-free laws are more likely to have more women quit smoking during pregnancy and also more likely to have less preterm birth. People living with mental illnesses and substance use disorders or behavioral health conditions tend to have a higher tobacco use prevalence, higher tobacco addiction. So it's important to tailor treatment and even personalized treatment for those living with behavioral health conditions. So these individuals may require more intensive addressing of their coping skills, uh, more intensive addressing of their relapse, so trying to do more relapse prevention. And when we give them pretty much the evidence-based programs, they can be successful. In some of the programs we've done in the past, we have up to 40% success rate among those who stay the entire program. Our Tobacco-Free Ambassador Program is really an innovative way to promote compliance with the university's tobacco-free policy and we have ambassadors on our campus that we train to promote the policy so that there's an awareness with visitors, with students, with staff and faculty. We also have them share information on tobacco treatment resources so that there is utilization of the amazing resources we have on campus. After just the first year of our official program, we saw about a 40% decrease in observed violations and also cigarette butts and campus hotspots. For me, the other thing that's really important is we continue to see a fourfold increase in utilization of tobacco treatment resources and I think that reinforces the necessity of having tobacco treatment resources on campus, but our ambassadors also promote the opportunity to quit when people are ready. One of the things that I'm most proud of is that we've been able to develop an online specialist training program, and that is a huge feat. We have developed this program over a number of months. We had a number of content experts 
at our university that helped us out and we've put together a 27-hour program that we feel is accessible and affordable for people, particularly those in our state that are in rural regions. So far we've had participants just in our first year uh, from 13 different states. We have someone from Alaska right now. You know, we've been able, with your support, to develop an online tobacco treatment specialist training program and it's really the only one in the world. So we're really, really excited about that and, and pleased that we had that opportunity. Well, it's I add it to my list of bragging points because it's pretty amazing when you actually earn, and that's a lot of work, to earn accreditation and to be out there to say, once again, University of Kentucky College of Nursing is out there on the forefront. One of the really novel things about the Breathe team is that we uh, are cross-cutting in the work that we do. We started out doing simply tobacco control, but we learned early on that there are other things that interact with tobacco that to put people at risk primarily of lung disease. So radon is a colorless, odorless gas that comes from the ground and it gets trapped in a building. And when you breathe radon, it's harmful in and of itself, but when you breathe it in a in addition to tobacco smoke, you're putting yourself at grave risk for lung cancer. So there's a synergistic risk, and we have done multiple studies in this area. We work with the geologists to map the problem. We do a lot of education in the community. I think Breathe um, really has been successful in bringing many, many different people to the table. And we do not only research in an academic institution, but we reach to the community. We get community partners engaged. We are doing some citizen science uh, to, to try to engage the community in collecting data and understanding the problem uh, right where they live. And so um, I think we have a bright future uh, for our team and for the work that we're doing. And uh, Breathe wants to make it an easier place to breathe.